Welcome to my channel, Balance Sheets Matter. In this video, I'm gonna be doing an analysis on Pfizer stock. And I'm also gonna look if Alex Jones is right about the mandates coming back, because if he's right, this might mean it's a good time to buy Pfizer stock, because you know what that means? More vaccines and more profit for Pfizer. So, as you can see here, it's conspiracy theory spreads false information about the return of COVID-19 mandates. So we're going to fact check the fact check by looking at the financials of Pfizer stock. <laughs> okay, so let's dive into Pfizer stock. Let's look, start looking at their fundamentals. Here right now, I'm in Guru Focus. You can see the little Guru fact, Focus value bar shows this huge surge and coming back to normalcy. This is because when they were selling all the vaccines, they had a big surge in revenue. And it looks like going forward, there really isn't priced in for a lot of revenue from any vaccines for at least the COVID ones in the future. But let's look at the fundamentals of the company. So one of the key things is people like to look at the PE. PE is pretty low at 9.5. Ford PE is 10.86, meaning their EPS going forward is going to be a touch lower than before. This also might be why the stock's trading quite low because it is quite significantly off its highs. This is a big dividend stock. So dividend investors really like this because you have a big yield of 4.56% with a dividend payout ratio of only 0.43. And it's a reasonable dividend growth at 3.6% per year. So if you invest in Pfizer stock, you're gonna be making a nice dividend. It's gonna be growing over time, but we need to look at the financials to see if this is sustainable for Pfizer to keep paying out this dividend. So let's jump into the financials here. And as you can see, this is our revenue trend line going up on the long term over time. But basically, they had the big surge, as we know here, and then the revenue is coming down. So it is expected to be a little bit lower, almost flat, marginally increasing. So it doesn't look like they're pricing in any mandates in Pfizer stock right now. But if there is, and Pfizer is going to be more vaccine, get more vaccine sales, this would be a surprise on the upside for revenue. So we need to keep this in mind. And we can see the long term revenue growth trend is about 6% for the last 10 years, which, you know, maybe that's what it's going to be in the future. So let's now pop down to the income statement here. Actually, first, always nice to look at your ROIC and WACC. So you can see the ROIC, not always the best, a little bit below what you would like, but it's been a lot better in the recent years and their weighted average cost of capitals here. So this isn't the greatest, I would say. Usually if your weighted average cost to capital is around what your return on invested capital is, you're not the company's not really profiting very much on their investments. So that's not that great. It's not the worst, but let's look a little bit further in the Pfizer stock here. We can see their long-term revenue growth trend here. And we are at 77 billion, 78 billion right now, but this is expected to come down to about 66. So if we look from the long-term perspective, they do have these little boosts and then it does come back down because when certain drugs or certain vaccines come out, there's a big demand for them and they contract a little bit, although they do have drugs that are in their pipeline and they are consistently selling. But the long-term growth trend does seem to be marginally up because even in 2018, 2019, they're down to only 40 billion. Now we're expected 66 going forward. That's not too bad. They have really good gross margins, really high. So regardless of what their sales are, they're making a lot of money off this. Like right now, the last is almost 70% and it's actually ticking back up. And in the past, it was even a little bit higher before. We can see where they're putting this money. A little bit goes into selling in general admin. So when they're making in the last year here, $54 billion, they put 15 billion into selling in general admin. And they also, because they're a drug company, they have to put uh, money into the research and development every year as well. And you can see this trend just slowly ticks up over time. And they spent 11 billion last year. And this leaves a nice overall operating income this last year of $23 billion. In compared to all these other years, other than maybe the last couple years, this has been pretty good. So Pfizer is quite profitable. They're doing good. They have good margins. The next thing to see as well is there are a lot of interest they're paying. Their interest expense is actually like pretty low relatively. 1.4 billion may seem like a lot. They're also earning a lot of interest income. So this means they have a lot of cash and marketable securities. And with the higher interest rates, they're making a lot. Maybe they wanna pay down some of their debt, maybe they don't, but when they're sitting on this cash, their net debt is actually, they're only paying about 750 million a year. And that's hardly anything compared to their operating income. This is actually like a 20 to one ratio, which is extremely strong. This is what I really like to see for an interest ratio for a company. So we go down, we're gonna look at the net income here. Again, you can see 
back like over 10 years ago, you know, they're 8 billion up to 10, 14, 22. And you know, it's a little bit fluctuating up and down because again, there's sometimes years when you have pandemics and vaccines have to go out, you're gonna make a lot more money. Other years, you're just selling your standard stuff. It does fluctuate, but they are profitable every year. And they do have these really strong net margins in the high teens, sometimes up to 40% right now at 27. And that creates a really nice EPS. Always positive, generally growing over time, fluctuates up and down a little bit. You know, we had the big in 2022, $5.47 EPS. It's down to 376 now, not as good. And for shares outstanding, they are buying back shares slowly, not super quick recently. In the last actually few years, they actually haven't bought any shares back. Well, any net shares back, they've actually issued more shares. But we're gonna examine this further in the cash flow statement. So we go into their balance sheet. We want to see if this is a strong balance sheet because remember, balance sheets matter. This is what my channel is about. Total current assets, we're sitting at $73 billion. And like I said, they're getting a lot of interest income coming in. And this is from the marketable security. So they have all this extra cash. They have not invested probably in money market funds, making a lot of interest for them. So let's keep that in mind. $42 billion, actually 40, almost $45 billion of cash in marketable securities with $73 billion in current assets. And then we look at their current liabilities, extremely low, only 34 billion. So almost all that cash they have is just free cash. And this is a really, really good current ratio of almost basically to over, basically over two times the current assets, the current liabilities. So they're gonna have no problem paying any of their bills in the next year. Also the total assets, $220 billion. We have to keep in mind a lot of this is intangible assets, $50 billion of goodwill, which I kind of completely write off because this is just from acquisitions, it's not really real. The remainder, which is about 40 billion, is probably in patents, so there probably is quite a lot of value in these, so we should factor this in in our analysis. So we go down, we go down further, we're gonna look at the total liabilities, 120 total liabilities, and this leaves them with total stockholder equity of about $100 billion. We know about 50 billion of dollars of that is goodwill. So we're down to, you know, 40 something. I think it was 50. Yeah, 50 there. So, you know, we got both, you know, another just under 50 billion in total equity. A lot of this is intangibles, and, but a lot of it's cash. So I look at this company, you could say they have, you know, real tangible equity because I do consider patents in, uh, you know, drug and come like, you know, pharmaceutical company like this to be more tangible compared to other types of intangible assets of $50 billion. And this is actually quite a lot of money because if we go look at their overall market cap down here, it's only $200 billion. So in one way or another, they have enough cash where they could hypothetically buy back almost like around 20% of their stock, or we consider, you know, about a quarter of this is actually like equity that you have in the company. So that's already looking pretty good. We can see that from the financials that Pfizer, you know, they're not going to be a big grower necessarily, unless Alex Jones is right, then they may, if they get that really big boost in revenue there, may be very good for them. But even regardless of that, the company's sitting flush with cash, they're very financially profitable, and we just really need to determine if this is a good value to buy right now at the time. So to do that, I like looking on somewhat of a relative valuation front. Let's pop to the interactive chart here and kind of like look at how they've done in the past. So. First, let's just look at what the projections are going forward. This takes the analyst estimates. So you can see the big trend there, it comes back down, but overall there's this slow, steady uptrend. So they get these flat periods of boost, flat periods of boost, flat periods of boost. So in the long run, if you buy Pfizer cheap, it may be a, even a good long-term buy and hold because where you do have these stagnant periods, they may get cheap. The revenue and their EPS is going up in the long term over time, but you also have to be aware it could stay stagnant for a long time too. So let's look at the price to sales ratio because this is one of the things I like to look at. Price to earnings is a little bit sometimes fluctuates a lot year per year. And right now we're sitting at a pretty low price to sales ratio, almost as low as back here. Not quite as low, but the other thing to realize is the revenue is coming down next year. So in reality, this price to sales ratio is sitting a little bit closer to three. And let's compare this to the stock price, to kind of get us an idea of what it looks like. We're gonna just bump back to the 30 year chart. And you can see like a lot of other stocks, there is quite a bit of correlation between the price to sales ratio and the stock price, because when the multiple expands up, the stock price goes up. So when you buy, uh, 
stocks when their multiples are historically low, that typically can be a good value for them in the long run. So from what I'm seeing here, Pfizer could be a good value, uh, even at the price right now, uh, when even just trading at a three, because you compare it to all these other previous times, let's look at a little bit shorter chart here. Even at a three price to sales ratio, other than the back time here, but from 2013 going forward, that's been a historically cheap price to buy Pfizer stock. Another thing I like to look at for these more dividend oriented stocks, which can pay out these consistent dividends, is looking at the dividend yield. So we can see the dividend yield right now at 4.56. This is historically high yield. So this is also telling us that this is potentially a really good buy because on the low side, the yield's going down under 3% into the mid twos, maybe 3% on the low side, 4% on the high side. So if we took this method of whenever it's getting around 3%, you know, maybe we're buying, uh, no, when it's 3% we're selling and when it's closer to 4% we're buying, you would see we would be perf perfectly timing the market almost with Pfizer here, buying the lows and selling the highs. So right now this is looking at a low. I did forget to go over the dividends in the financials here. So let's just pop into that again and quickly look at their cash flow because they also do do some share buybacks. So we get into their cash flow statement and we do want to see what they're doing. They are, they always are reinvesting into the company purchase of plant property and equipment. They do have to do this and they do do acquisitions along the way. And then with all the profits they have, they buy back stock. They haven't bought back a lot recently though, which is a little bit strange considering all the cash they're sitting on, but they do pay out a lot of dividends. And this is a nice thing to do is get the dividends, like paying out, people like getting those, but I would like to see them buying back a little more stock, even though, especially because they have this very large cash pile they're sitting on. So now let's look at overall where the chart's looking like the stock price. I have this little overall trend channel here going, and as you can see, after they had the big boom here from all their vaccine sales, they've just been coming down and down and down and down and down. And this is actually starting to look like quite an attractive buy here because you look at back, they're almost the same price they were in 2014, 2015, and they're at the bottom trend into these moving averages. So along with looking like a good value, this is looking like a potentially a good technical place to buy the stock. And if there is any uptick in mandates and more vaccine sales, we could see a lot of upside for Pfizer. And if not, maybe we slowly trend up, we you know collect the dividend and you know you can feel pretty good about that. Another little interesting fact I thought to bring up is Pfizer is challenging the Moderna vaccine patents with the US Patent Office. So they're trying to monopolize this industry themselves. They want to be the only one. So, you know, if you're betting for more vaccines coming out, if you believe Alex Jones, I think Pfizer stock is a great buy right now. Though obviously this is not financial advice, but regardless, I'm probably going to be buying a little bit of Pfizer stock right now myself, just from purely a value play. It seems like a good value, seems like there's some good upside. And in the meantime, when I'm holding it, I'm collecting the nice dividend. So I hope you liked this video. Remember to like, share, and subscribe, and stay tuned for my next stock analysis video.